Now we're going to take a look at our controlling concepts from the back. The way that I teach this and the way that it's taught at other schools is a little bit different. After we understand that spacing between my hips and his hips, we're going to take a look at the most basic submission from the back, the rear naked choke. So I'm on Marty's back. I've got that double under, and you can't see it, but I've got both lapels. Where does my control differ from everybody else's? Here it is. You see this pocket? You have to have the pocket. If you don't have a pocket, you're going to get your back control passed. You're going to be embarrassed, okay? I come in here, and I keep my pelvis nice and tight, and I'm pushing, and Marty does something really, you know, like advanced, like bridge back into me. When he bridges back into me, it flattens me out. This is a problem. Now he's start getting his back to the floor, clearing my feet, and creating problems for me. We don't want any of that. Push back forwards. So what do I do here? I leave this pocket. My ankles rest on his thighs. I'll never be able to cross my feet like this. And when he does something really cool, like push back into me, it leaves a pocket. All right? So now that we have this pocket, now all of a sudden none of my opponents are too tall for me to choke. It makes sure that he's uncomfortable, he's off balance, he's caught in that transition between sitting upright and being down. You'll notice that I'm still upright. I've got a lot of different options here, and as we move through the control in the back block, we're going to go over a bunch of options that we can abuse this pocket and give him a hard time. So now let's look at the rear naked choke using this pocket. back, I made sure to leave a good pocket back here. Notice I couldn't even cross my feet if I wanted to. He can't force my feet crossed. From here, my head's going to come to the inside, and I'm double, uh, double underhooks on the lapels. Now Marty pulls back into me, or I pull, excuse me, Marty pushes back into me, or I pull him back into me. Here's a piece that a lot of people miss. See where our heads are? It's like a little glamour shot. Sometimes I smile at the people on the side of the, the ring. That's what we want. We want our heads close together. I want to look like he's my bestest friend in the whole world. Now that I'm here and I've got this double under, I need to understand that I'm giving up a little bit of control to go for this rear naked choke. And that's fine. What I'm going to do is I'm still going to maintain control on one of the lapels, or you can go on the over grip on the arm. This is preferred, but sometimes they don't give me their arms, and I'll just stay right here. So from here, I'm going to take out one hand, and this bony part of my uh, thumb is going to cut underneath of his ear, underneath of his chin, and it's going to come back here and control at the, at the back of the uh, shoulder blade. So again, I keep that glamour shots on the inside, give him the thumbs up, I get that bladed part, I cut underneath his ear and come all the way to the back. Notice, my head is still nice and tight. This is going to give me control. If Marty wants to defend, he's going to take his back to the floor over here. If I don't have my head here, he comes to the floor, embarrasses me. Next thing I know, I went from 500 friends on Facebook to 475. You can't have that, okay? So I'm in here. I've got good control on the back of the shoulder blade, nice and tight. The typical rear naked choke. I bring my arm over, and I bring it behind the head. Oh, man. Problem. When I start to bring this arm in front, he catches it. That's embarrassing. Okay, now I'm here, and I can't finish it. That's stupid, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take this hand and I'm going to sneak it in. It's never going to come into the front. I'm going to make it into a blade, and I'm going to start to push it into the back of his head. Well, that hand on the shoulder blade is also in a little blade. So when this one comes in, this one comes onto the bicep. It's pretty simple and it's pretty sneaky, and it never, never gave him the opportunity to block that arm. This is dumb. This is great. So let's be great, okay? Now that I've gotten to this position, don't be like those UFC fighters. Don't stretch his body. That's dumb, too. We've got this pocket. We can abuse it. What I'm going to do is I'm going to put pressure with my elbow down onto his chest, and that's going to collapse everything forward. The choke will be far more intense. Play around with it. See what I'm talking about. Let's look at it again from scratch right here. So I'm here. I've got good control. I'm pulling back into that pocket. Man, he's not that tall anymore. Give him the glamour shot. Make sure he's smart, right? hand, I get the blade apart with that knuckle, underneath the head, I come to the back, I'm still giving him that glamour shot, you don't like the glamour shot, but I like it, okay, from here, the hand comes out, and it's going to come around the back, hand to the inside, now I'm going to put pressure down, right there, you see how quick he taps, I wasn't even pushing that part, let's look at it again from a different angle, still got that awesome pocket, sometimes I put my head in to power break real hard, now he pushes back into me, awesome, I hit him with that glamour shot, 
My hand comes out, it comes around underneath the head, I get control of that shoulder blade. Again, still with the glamour shot. This hand can come into play now. Never comes in front. Always stays behind the head here, and that elbow's going to go down on his chest. So the motion here, when we get in, we get to this, it's pushing here, it's not stretching here. Stretching is for people that don't know what the hell they're doing. Squishing is for people that want to win. Stretching for people that don't know what they want to do. Squishing to win. Squish. 